This is by far the hardest video I've ever had to make. What you're about to see are fish suffering a very slow death to something called marine velvet. If you know this is something that would bother you, I suggest you turn off the video now and go watch one of my other many videos that I have in my library. Let's get started. Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. Before we get started with this video, I just wanted to take a moment to thank each and every one of you who left a comment in the last video. The comments were super encouraging and uplifting. I was truly overwhelmed with the amount of support that you guys have shown. So a big sincere thank you to each and every one of you. Today I'm bringing you a very disturbing video. In all of my years in this hobby, putting out YouTube videos, this one ranks number one as the most difficult video to make. It's also one of the most important videos I'm sharing with you. I'm not pulling back anything here. I'm going to share with you all my mistakes, laziness, ignorance, or whatever you want to call it, which led to the eventual death of almost all of my fish. What I'm hoping for is my mistakes will become a learning experience for you so that you're better equipped to handle fish disease in your system. Part of documenting and sharing my build process is not only to share my successes, but also my failures. And boy, did I fail here. Keep in mind, this event occurred over one year ago. The footage you're watching is from last year. Unfortunately, I lost all but two fish to this catastrophe. Okay, so what happened last year? If you've been following my build, you know that I had quarantined and introduced phase one and phase two of my fish successfully into the display tank. The final phase of fish consisted of a hippo tang, a powder blue tang, a purple tang, and a trigger fish. All four were juveniles and would be introduced into the main tank together. Of course, prior to going to the main tank, all four fish were placed in the quarantine tank for about four weeks. During the time I watched them, all were aggressive eaters, showed little aggression towards each other, and appeared to be overall healthy and happy. After their quarantine period, I placed the final phase of fish into the display tank where they were introduced to the two prior fish phases for the first time. Notice what I thought was ick on the powder blue tang. I know tangs are especially susceptible to ick, and I've had tangs in the past who would occasionally get ick and then it'd clear up. It was just a cycle that they went through on occasion without affecting the other fish. Although concerned, I decided to keep an eye on him. The thought of tearing down the rock work just seemed daunting. Additionally, I would have to put all of the fish inside a 30 gallon quarantine tank and treat them with aggressive medication, which is exceptionally harmful to the wrasses. I also figured catching the fish with a net and moving them again to the quarantine tank would add additional stress and potentially exacerbate the situation. So I figured I'd just monitor things and keep the fish well fed. Since I didn't have any quarrels for the exception of an anemone, I decided to also treat the tank with reef safe ick treatment. At this point, I'm guessing that some of you are judging my decision to not at least remove the powder blue tank. Believe me, it's a decision that I will regret for a very long time. It's also a decision that almost made me quit the hobby entirely. From what I could tell, I made at least three mistakes here. I'm sure some of you will add the comments down below to add maybe a few more mistakes. But from my perspective, I made three mistakes. First, knowing tanks are susceptible to ick, I should have happened or had them quarantined for a couple weeks longer in the quarantine tank. Secondly, I assumed the powder blue tank was showing signs of ick. Thirdly, even though I assumed it was ick, I should have still pulled out the fish, at minimum just pulled the powdered blue tang since none of the other fish were showing any signs of infection at this point. A couple of days after I noticed what we're calling ick, on my powdered blue tang, my hippo tang died and my trigger fish disappeared. Neither the hippo tang nor the trigger showed any signs of being sick. Soon after, my purple tang also started showing signs of what I still thought was ick. Then the rest of my fish followed. It wasn't for about seven days later that I realized what my fish had was actually not ick at all. The initial ick-like spots started to change. The coats on the fish turned to a slimy milky white as if somebody sprinkled talcum powder all over their bodies and their eyes clouded over too. They had difficulty swimming and their breathing became labored. One by one, my fish fell victim to what I now realized was marine velvet. Everything I was told and everything I read about marine velvet at this stage was grim. At this point, I felt powerless. I thought any sort of treatment at this stage would only add to the suffering. The last to be affected were my eight-year-old black and white Ocellaris clownfish. The two fish that kept me going in this hobby were now obviously suffering an unimaginable pain. Now, I know this might sound weird to those of you who are new to the hobby or those of you that are just curious about this video, but these fish were truly my pets. 
Even reliving my experience by making this video is bringing back some seriously awful feelings. Watching my clownfish suffer was absolutely the worst part of this whole experience. At one point, my male clownfish was actually dragging around strands of algae on its fins. When I came home one day after work, my wife literally had tears rolling down her cheeks. She couldn't take watching the clownfish suffer anymore. The end result was going to be obvious. These 8-year-old clownfish were a pair and were spawning regularly. I raised them since they were little babies only to cut their lives short over a series of mistakes that I had made. It's important for all of you to take a very close look at the symptoms of marine velvet so that you don't make the same mistake that I did by misdiagnosing it should you ever have the unfortunate experience of dealing with it. The only two fish that survived were my silver belly wrasse and my hawkfish. I removed both of these guys and placed them in the quarantine tank. As far as I was concerned at this point, I was getting out of the hobby altogether. I was absolutely done. The tank sat empty for several months. My mind was made up. I was getting out. Now thankfully, I had prepaid to attend MACNA in Las Vegas, as I've done with every MACNA event in the previous 6 years or so. I got to hang out with Rico from Rico's Aquariums and Ward from Ward's Aquariums. Both played a big part in encouraging me to get back into the hobby. Not to mention being at MACNA also played a big part in my decision to return. I removed the system from Craigslist and started to refocus on getting this tank going again. Version 2 of this tank has been up and running since about September of 2018. It's been full steam ahead since. Although this video was very difficult to make, putting my experience out there really seals a chapter in the book for me. I can put the experience behind me and focus my efforts on the care for the pets that I have now. So if you're not aware, I'm very active on Instagram, posting new updates nearly daily. Search Reefer Gill on Instagram, then hit that follow button. If you'd like to follow along with version 2 of my new build, hit that subscription button. If you learned something from this video, hit that thumbs up. If you have any comments or experience on Marine Velvet, leave your comments down below. Otherwise, we will see you guys next time, and thanks for watching.